Welcome to Happily Ever Aftermath, the podcast where we discuss relationships in movies and our relationships with them. I'm Plea Grinfield. And I'm Diana Rojek Sconner. Hey everyone, Diana here. We wanted to give you a heads up that we recorded this episode before the news of George Floyd's death had filtered through the noise of our lives. We wanted you to have this context before you listened. We also wanted to address why we participated in Podcast Blackout. So while we've been doing this podcast for three years, we've had a lot of issues come up, like the Me Too movement and COVID, but we never really made any comments outside of a regular episode. I'm only going to speak for myself. A little background, um, I am Italian, Polish, and Pacific Islander, and up to about three years ago, I used to reply to Black Lives Matter with All Lives Matter. I would get defensive and make excuses for my white friends when they were called out. I would think, hey, it's not about race, it's about introverts and extroverts. I would make excuses for complete strangers when friends would tell me about the times they experienced racism. They would tell me about their experiences, And I would wonder if they were sure, or I would think that maybe that's not the way the person meant it. I used to believe that people needed to pull themselves up by their bootstraps and everyone had an equal opportunity. But I learned, and I am learning, and I will continue to do so. I participated in Podcast Blackout because I chose to use my voice on my podcast in my circles. Still, Happily Ever Aftermath is my hobby. It's about movies that shaped our ideas. And it is a reflection of our experiences, good and bad. So as always, we will talk about movies that shaped our lives and opinions. And as I continue to educate myself, the podcast will continue to share what I thought then and how I am learning to be better. Hello, Diana. Helena, I'm excitable that you brought a friend to our podcast. I brought a friend. I brought a, a very good friend and a very dear friend. And it's her third time. It's like, it's our annual Jenning, as you <laughs> so lovingly put it, uh, Diana. Um, and so Jen, Jen um, is not only is a listener, which is kind of exciting, um, but also a uh, also just uh, has been a fantastic guest and some of my favorite episodes. Um, and we are here to talk about her pick, which is Empire Records from 1995, mm. which was and, yeah, yeah, exactly. Hi, Jen. <laughs> Hello. I am so happy to be here and so excited. Oh, my God. We're so glad. We're really excited, too. So we're all really excited. Um, Yeah, I love hanging out with Jen any way I can. So like this. Yeah, it's too much. Too much. Too much. So we might as well record it. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. We'll have a really insane conversation. Might as well put it on air. Um, So, yeah. So uh, 1995. It shows. It shows. The movie shows that it's from 1995. It, I don't know what you mean. Are you talking about like them plaid skirts with the fuzzy <laughs> sweaters and the midriff showing? Oh, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. And the, uh, yeah, with the, let's see, shaved heads, which I realize are perennial, but you know. Oh, yeah. Um, but like at that time, yeah, there was a, like, it, I have to say, even just seeing the poster, which I was with, uh, I was talking to Jen at the time um, when she, told me she wanted to do this movie and I was like I looked at the poster I was like oh my god this is so 90s tastic all the guys so all the guys are wearing enormous like three sizes too big Mm -hmm. floppy sort of bowl cuts yep um brown lipstick I mean man I mean it was it was it it took me back it took me back I think I had all those clothes I'm pretty sure I dabbled in brown lipstick for about 45 seconds. Oh, yeah. I had, in fact, I actually rebought my 1990 lipstick uh, recently or a couple of years ago when it sort of came back. And it's, uh, I think it's called New York 
something. It's by Revlon. And it was the exact color that I, I wore. I'll have to find that. That's okay. Uh, Jen, may I do the honors of reading the description in the cast? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So Empire Records, as Polina mentioned, 1995. Mm. Uh, so from the Google search, Joe Anthony LaPaglia runs Empire Records, an independent Delaware store that employs a tight-knit group of music-savvy youths. Hearing that the shop may be sold to a big chain, technically that was read. Reading that the uh, the chain, um, I'm just doing my own commentary as I go here. Okay. <laughs> as you do. Okay. Uh, Slacker employee Lucas, uh, Rory Cochrane, bets a chunk of the store's money hoping to get a big return. When this plan fails, Empire Records falls into serious trouble. And the other cl- clerks, including lovely Corey, Liv Tyler, and gloomy Deb, Robin Tooney, must deal with the problems among many other issues. So it stars Anthony LaPaglia. Uh, this description didn't bother to mention uh, Maxwell Caulfield, i.e. Rex Manning. Um, and that's important to those of you who have not seen this movie. But if you have, I recommend you pausing it, watching it, and then coming back. <laughs> uh, Debbie Mazar, the aforementioned Rory Cochrane, Johnny Whitworth, Robin Tooney, Renee Zellweger, now two-time Oscar winner, mm-hmm. um, Ethan Embry, um, and then we've got Liv Tyler and uh, various other people. I would like to point out that I was worried that there was something wrong. Like, did I get this strange cut of the movie <laughs> when the credits started? Because I'm just like, okay, Anthony LaPaglia, Debbie Mazar. Did I get the right movie? No, it said Empire Records. And then like 12 names later, it said like Liv Tyler and mm, Rory right. Cochran. And I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I'm just in 1995 when these people were not like, you know, <laughs> explosively yeah. in, you know, elf movies and such. Yes, yes, yes. This was before Liv Tyler was an elf. But Got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, her she was still as an a pixie. elf. Exactly, a manic <laughs> pixie. Um, not quite, yeah. but yeah. Um, yeah. So okay. So when did you? Okay, so let's do. Let's do the usual. When did you see this movie, or how did you see it? When? Uh, mm-hmm. When? Uh, and in what circumstances did you first see it? See, that was the part that I was trying to remember frantically. Mm. And I honestly <laughs> cannot remember. It's just part of my, like, memory of the 90s. Like, but what I do remember is, is the same feeling of, like, I can identify with every single person that's in the movie, all the characters in many different bits. And it really touched me in a lot of different ways um when i watched it for the first time which i can't remember um Mm -hmm. and when i watched it recently all those memories just like all those emotions and had came flooding back in so it was just it was just one of those movies like you watch it and go i really love that movie by the way it has terrible rating (laughs) Okay, that actually shocks me. Oh, okay, so uh, uh, I, I, I never saw this movie, mm-hmm. but I, I, but I knew everything about it. And when you, when I remember when you told me about it, I mm-hmm. even like had a moment mm-hmm. of like, I was like, did I see it? And I had to sort of look, and I looked at the poster, and I realized it's just so nineties tastic that, mm-hmm. that like I feel like I don't remember West, but I definitely never did. I was obsessed with mm-hmm. Pump Up the Volume, which I really want to do for this podcast, but it's very difficult to find. And I should mm-hmm. find it, but I just feel like it's a little unfair. So um, I was obsessed with that movie, which is by the same director. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, uh, Alan I see. Moyle. Ah. And I feel like this movie had the same thing. So this is the mm-hmm. first time I saw it was yesterday. And I... <laughs> I was making, I needed to make soup. And so I thought like, oh, this is perfect. I'll have it on while I like cut up soup, you know, or cut mm-hmm. up vegetable soup. And it was actually not a good, it's like, there's so, there's so many little moments that actually this, this movie requires like more focus, you know, <laughs> than attention <laughs> than I realized. And, uh, but I have to say, I, I felt the same way. Like it, 
it made me think of, like remember being a teenager or yes. not a teenager, but being a, like early years. Um, so 1995, I know, you know, now I realize why I didn't see it. Cause it was a, like, that's the year I moved here. And then I was preparing to move mm-hmm. to San Francisco doing all these things. And so I probably didn't have a lot of cash to go to the movies. Um, but yeah, I totally get it. Um, but that is my entire thing with it. But I feel like I feel so familiar. It does, because uh, what it what it because during this would have been I uh, I watched a lot of movies when I was in high school, and it would have been like beginning of my high school years. Right. So I most likely watched it during that period, and I went through huge emo phase during high school where I, I was, you know, it's like taking life very seriously, reading a lot of serious novels. I was taking myself and life very seriously. And <laughs> it's like life, it's fucked. No one understands my pain, you know, like in that mode where, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, oh, completely hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, obviously me too. Yeah. And, <laughs> It's like in those moments you watch those movies, it's like somebody kind of gets it because there is that one girl. Oh, see, I'm I'm bad with names, but no, no, um, I'm on like, it. I'm oh, on Deborah. it. Is it Deborah? Yes, it's, it's uh, Deborah. With the shaved head. Yes, I'm gonna assume you're talking about her. And you know, life is hard. I don't know how to deal. And you know, like every. It, it, and every character goes through a journey. Like mm-hmm. they have a very, like they, they have the beginning. Everybody has a moment of like, I am going to lose it. Other than the dude that is just goofy the entire time. Yes, he doesn't really <laughs> have a story. No. Um, and then you know everybody gets to find a good, comfortable place. Like they find themselves at the end of the movie, and it's like, oh, nineties teenager emo it's and then it was so sweet to watch it and so um i want to say naive but very um not innocent or um, pure almost like yeah yeah. feels very innocent i yeah i felt the same way so diana uh yeah i felt a lot of the same way which i totally want to pick up on um so diana like how uh what is your history with this film Well, first of all, I would love to point out that you both said this movie is very innocent. At the same time, I completely agree with you, but I'm like, you guys do remember that one of them tried to kill themselves and the other one was addicted to speed and the other one, like, you know, very, very close to grand larceny. Larceny is like over $10,000, right? Okay. Okay, good. (laughs) But no, I absolutely You're right. The feeling of it, not the, you're right. And then there was the like, you know, there's the woman who like has sex with a is want you know sex having sex mm-hmm. with a stranger yeah i, I get that part well, but that, just that's like, actually that is on the innocent realm of that kind of thing I, I would put that like on the lower end of people who have problems mm-hmm. um but but i'll get back to that in a minute so <laughs> okay so empire records when when polina you mentioned oh jen wants to come on and talk about it i'm just like I know this movie, but I haven't <laughs> seen this movie. And then when I watched it, I'm like, oh, that that was, I really enjoyed it. And then I had to think about it like an hour later. I'm like, have I seen this movie before? <laughs> well, because actually remember. when I told you I was, yeah, because we were talking on the phone and yeah. I, I had to like look it up. Yeah. Uh-huh. But I didn't have it handy. And, uh, and so when I was talking to you, I didn't have it handy, and I was like, give me a second. It's the movie, and I was trying to ex- describe it while I was looking it up, Yeah, and you go, Empire Records. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> you clearly were like, I'm like, it's really 90s-tastic. It takes place, wait, it's, and then you're like, it's Empires. I don't remember, like, I think I gave you two more clues, and you're like, it's Empire Records. Oh, yeah, 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 and, and it, was pretty, it was pretty funny, because I can tell you, like, I hear the movie Empire Records, I'm immediately transported to junior year uh, journalism class because my friend Jill also, we were both the editors of the newspaper and she very much loved that movie. And I remember it like 
back in the day, children, when there was something <laughs> called the TV Guide Channel. Mm, uh, oh, the TV Guide Channel. It would play tiny previews of movies as it was like trying to advertise you the things that it was. Actually, it probably wasn't even the TV Guide Channel at the time. It was just the, you know, here's, you know, before your remote could, you know, tell you, you know, you know, on demand what's going on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, yeah, it was the. It was the Guide channel. I don't know if it was TV Guide, but yeah. I think eventually TV Guide bought it up, but that's that's really not the point here. Um, I just remember watching the tiny preview, and the scene they kept flipping over and over again was lifting up the drums to above on the signage. And I'm Mm -hmm. just like, well, I know that there's a a drum lifting scene, so, (laughs) you know, as I'm trying to get ready for it. But I will tell you that... Polina calls this 90s tastic. Mm-hmm. But but if I did or did not see it in the past, because I can feel Jill having me sit down and watch this movie, and it's very possible. Mm-hmm. I just thought I absorbed it in my regular ways. Much like, you know, growing up, I knew the plot of The Empire Strikes Back because it was in my bones. There's no mm-hmm. not, there's like not knowing and knowing. It just is in pop culture and it, it was infused in me. And in that journalism room, Empire Records was infused in me. You know, you got right. this. Huh. I knew what happened with Liv Tyler and her excitement of wanting to give up her virginity to Rex Manning. And I knew it was not going to go well. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's a cautionary you know, tale. Yeah. I mean, I know what you mean because I kind of feel like I was like, uh, yeah, that because I, I just I also like on a similar thing the other day I realized I've never I would not actually seen the movie Jaws, huh. like like Sean asked me and I was like, oh my god, no, I I don't and it just I, like it literally never occurred to me that I hadn't seen the movie. It just I assumed I'd seen it yeah. because it's just such a normal sort of. I mean, obviously, this is not mm-hmm. Jaws, but like it's such a normal touchstone. Great movie. Really wish I'd, you know. But I mean, I think the same is true for me for It's a Wonderful Life and The Wizard oh. of Oz. Oh my like, gosh. You've never yes. actually <laughs> seen The Wizard of Oz? It was I on don't. TV all the time. I <laughs> don't know, Polina. I'm not sure. I couldn't answer the question about Empire Records. Do well, you think I can answer that yeah, about The Wizard of Oz? I think it's, yeah, it's like one of those things where you're like, I know I've seen parts of this movie, but I've mm-hmm. never, I don't think I've ever like consciously sat, sat down. down. Mm-hmm. I mean, I will say this is, I think, a, not, it's not a generational thing. I'm realizing how much it has to do with like, the smaller number of channels that existed like when I was here. Cause basically, you know, it was, it was like that movie was on twice a year. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And I think so you watched it because you had not a lot of other choices. There is that possibility, but I would also say that, you know, empire records is, I mean, I was reading about it. It, it did not do well at the box office. It did not do well critically, but if you ask a certain generation of people, kind of like the movie Hook, where like oh, certain generations yeah. of people will just be like, that is the greatest movie ever made mm-hmm. because marketing had to shift themselves and they pushed it into cable or they <laughs> pushed it elsewhere or they found mm. their audience and mm-hmm. their audience had bullhorns mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and yes. access to a chat room. So they just kind of like, burr, burr, watch Empire Records. I mean, I. I yeah, but it is, it's like, I, I don't know, re-watching this, like, I think maybe Innocent is in the right, but it's so sweet. Like, it's it just very so sweet. sweet. And it reminded me of having those friends, and, like, actually, now that I think about it, probably in 1995, mm-hmm. I was the age of the people in this movie. Maybe, maybe a few years older, but mm-hmm. it made me remember having those kind of jobs. You know, not office jobs. Mm-hmm. Like, either, you know... Uh, and then I also like, I hung, I was kind of, I, I was a wannabe record store girl. Like <laughs> that would have been, if somebody, you know, I knew I couldn't, I would never even try to work at a record store, but I hung out in the, uh, there's a record store in Princeton called, um, uh, oh my God, I can't believe I am spacing on the name of this place. I spent like my entire life there, or Princeton record exchange. Oh, hello. Oh my God. Um, that Lena. was crazy. You're Not fine. Surprised. You're okay. Today on the phone, I had to describe, you know, that procedure where they put you in a tube and you're all claustrophobic. <laughs> you mean CAT scan or an MRI? Yes. It doesn't matter. I know. <laughs> I described it as the tube. Yes, I totally understand. <laughs> well, 
my husband actually has a t-shirt. He didn't, he grew up in California, but when we went to visit Princeton, um, I, he got a, uh, a t-shirt. So I actually see the name of this record store on occasion. Uh, and he wears it quite often. Um, anyway, <laughs> so, uh, anyways, the, um, what was really interesting rewatching it? Cause it like all those feelings coming back. I thought that was wonderful. What I was surprised by is I should have known Empire Records that it is heavily influenced. Like there's a music element is very, very prominent in this movie. And I, great, actually. And great. Fantastic. Yes. It's so 90s. So I thought that. I was like, oh my gosh, I picked another musical without intending to pick another <laughs> musical, but it definitely had that musical feel to it because, you know, like they were dancing and singing to it, it was such a big part of that movie. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> well, and so, thank you. I'll pay you later. <laughs> um, I want to cut. Anyways, no, no here's no. what's, imp- here's what's important because, um, I wouldn't call it a musical. I think I've, I've mentioned this before. This movie is musically inclined mm-hmm. and those movies are amazing. And in fact, something that was kind of important. Um, so you were talking about this was high school for you. This was high school for me as well. Mm-hmm. Um, when it came out, not when I necessarily saw it, but these movies are just like, they can't do them this way now. Exactly. There's there is a heart and soul to these types of movies that exist in the moment, and for some reason I don't understand. Even though things were dated, it didn't feel aged. You're right. You're right. Because it is, is so. Feeling. It's almost like it's so specific that it can't age. Like, yeah, and it captured this ninety sense of like anything kind of like everything is at once shitty and miraculous. I mean, I realize like that's. You know, can, can you describe anything but a very no, that's, particular that's age moment too. and the age and like I but you're you're you are so right. And actually the music, you know, it's funny because I was thinking about, you know, having this kind of jobs. And actually in 1995, I had a job at a bar, uh, which was also like an art center. So it, it was kind of a similar thing where it was like trying to figure out our lives together and how we were going to have you know, creative lives, uh, ironically, uh, for me, but like how we were going to do this. Right. And there weren't a lot of jobs. And so it made sense like this working somewhere that of a thing that you liked was really important. And music, because we had at the time, you know, we, we didn't have a jukebox for longest time. We controlled all the records. And then even when we did, we realized that it just be, be, it was just a better idea to control Mm. the jukebox anyway. So, Mm. I remember being at work and having these, uh, like, especially like they had that, that Edwin Collins song, um, Never Met a Girl Like You Before, which is, <laughs> I love Edwin Collins so much. And, um, and I listened to that, like, all of his um, so much. And, and it reminded me of, like, being at work and then kind of, but then being so comfortable with the people that you're around that you would kind of be doing your job, but you would be sort of processing all of these things happening to you Mm -hmm. through the music while you sang along or danced along. Right. You know, Mm -hmm. and it's like, and you were kind of so comfortable in this very public place that was sort of your living room. I mean, I, I, I still feel this way about this bar because I worked there for so many years and so much of my life happened there. And I, my husband been there and I still go there um, a lot less than I used to. But, mm-hmm. you know, I used to, I lived around the corner, like close by. For, you know, it's just like I still feel that way about that place. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's like I just don't feel like I have to sort of, you know, I have to obviously be polite and mm-hmm. not, like piss anyone off. But like, yeah, I, I literally dance there like no one's watching because I'm <laughs> like, well, nobody is. I'm at work. I'm like an invisible server. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't know. I just like that part. And um I don't know. It's just, yeah, the the selection of music, there were songs I didn't really know or didn't like, and that was fine, but it, they all kind of made sense. Mm-hmm. And and it and they all like you saw them listening to them and reacting to them. Yes. Which is also true in pump up the volume. Like mm-hmm. I think it also captures <laughs> the way that music is so important to you and your 
like sort of process when, at least for me, when mm. I, I was that age, like music was everything. Yeah. So the, one of the things I thought about when you were talking about that Polina and mm-hmm. Jen, I'll want to ask you this question too is, so Polina has a place where it's just like, this is my work environment. Mm-hmm. And then music has a certain part of it. Yeah. And so the same time, you know, journalism, time jill and i actually worked together at Mm -hmm. a photography studio and i'm thinking Mm. about it more and more not only did we have like this interesting war of like if a certain manager comes in we have to listen to the you know generic you know pop station that Mm -hmm. played everything from yay happy when they're playing this but oh boo when they're playing this as opposed to when the cool manager's in and then we can listen to the classic rock station all day (laughs) so it's like again it's a war of music and Mm -hmm. then you know having to you know do that so was there anything like that jen when you were that age that like you kind of identified with or it was more of a longing of what you saw it's more of the emotional journeys that the characters went through that really identified with me I think music like watching it um I watched it today actually (laughs) Um, watching it today that really reminded me of how integral part it was to Mm. the movie oh yeah because Previously, yeah, it really was the emotional journey that everybody went through, the perfect person losing it, and then um, also the not-so-perfect person losing it, (laughs) and the suicidal gal losing it. Um, Dang. Yeah, it's just like everybody losing it and going through this journey of Mm -hmm. self-discovery. That really identified with me when I watched it when I was much, much younger. Now, now that I'm much, much older, <laughs> you know, I identify with that oh, magic person. That was... <laughs> <laughs> it has to be the adult, the only oh adult. Oh my God, yes. Around. <laughs> I, I totally, I, yeah, I was like, I really felt for him and I started kind of watching him to be like, well, how would you manage yeah. this? Like, just as a manager, right? You know, it's like, I, I find myself doing this a lot. Um, sometimes just sad. I'm like, wait, wait, why am I trying to get management advice from Empire Records? Like, exactly. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> like, but it's like, I don't even realize I'm doing it. But yeah, I had the same thing where I was like, oh, hold, like, it's like, yeah, he's trying to deal. And I think if I saw this in 1995, I wouldn't, he would have been, I would have just been like, Anthony LaPaglia, Paglia. I can never say that right. Paglia? Anyway. Lapalia. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm like, oh, yes, you know, swoon. But like, nah, I would have been like, yeah, that guy, like, why is he selling the store? I mean, (laughs) you know, like, he's selling out, man, because that's what we did in the 90s. We talked about selling out, you know, like, I don't know. (laughs) It's just (laughs) funny. Yes. So it it was... um... The olds. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the, like, so the way that, you know, I relate to this movie is so much different than how I related back then when I was much, much younger. And it, it was just nice to see an emotional outlet that these characters went through, where you feel like you are along the journey and you get to have your own emotional release as well. Like, yes, a yeah, proxy, mm. um, which I thought was really like those are the moments you would collect, connect with the movie and with the characters. It's like, oh, um, like it almost makes you like, oh, it's like it's okay to kind of lose it from time to time. I mean, obviously, Liv Tyler literally started screaming and uh, like did flailing. Some property. Yeah, I flailing. So, you know, like. I think the innocence and sweetness like comes from the fact that the way people reacted and the way that people um, responded to things, it's, which was much more like sweet and innocent. I think it would have been treated a little bit differently now. I mean, yeah, so this this might be. Hmm. Uh, I mean, it, this movie does contain some. Um, what I would say could be traumatic for some people but like you know there's a person who attempted suicide and there was a, a shooting by a teenager in <gasps> the store oh yeah yeah and i'm like that would never happen in a movie or it would be an incredibly different scene if it was filmed today and then 
all that kid wanted to do was like be the cool kids who worked at the record store. Right. And I'm like, so sweet and so innocent. This movie would never be made today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's like, yeah, exactly. Like it felt, I, I also felt like everyone kind of, even, even, you know, um, Deborah, like, uh, you know, that whole thing of like, there's the too cool for you girl who mm -hmm. like, you know, you, you have a relationship with, but you kind of, you know, I mean, we all have this with work, right? It's like, mm -hmm. oh, this is, let's assume she's, you know, actually like as an employee is like good to work with. And, but you're like, oh God, these things drive me crazy. But like they, I think they, they were just, they were really, they were so, um, they were so kind and empathetic toward each other. They let each other be themselves so much and like with but like without kind of being a pushover or without like basically yeah it's like what you said like creating the space to freak out which I think like you know right now uh I probably you know we've talked sort of both of us just independently of just like you know it's like there's so much sort of dealing right now and like there's so much going on and like you're sort of like when I saw her lose her shit and throw everything, I it felt it was so cathartic because I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I spend so much of my time trying not to freak out. Right. You know, and just like, I yes. like, wow, I would love to just walk into like to have somebody say walk into work and just like <laughs> throw everything. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to do that. Um I'm not like that is something I it would never I just would never happen. Like, I know mm -hmm. there's no way I would do that. But like. Just also to just, yeah, to be able to, like, have that space is is something, yeah. you know, you, I mean, that's such a function of age, too, that you feel like you can exactly. wallow in your emotions. And mm -hmm. I miss that. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't go that far. I, yeah, I don't think I miss Actually, I don't know if I miss I don't miss it. I don't miss that. Actually, now that I think about it, you're right. No, but, wall wallowing is not the right word. You're looking to make sure that you have access to good people who will let you have a freak out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And like, yeah. And then channel your freak out into because it's clear that Liv Tyler is not gonna like she doesn't do that every day. I'm sorry, not Liv Tyler is not Corey Mason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Corey is like, it's it's clear she's not gonna do that every day. So mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's just the culmination of so many bad things happening at the same time. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, like, it, it touches a lot of things, I, I think, that, pe like, a lot of people go through. Like, your first love, you meet your first celebrity, oh, and, yeah. you know, yeah. I, like, it, it, things like that. And then, you know, your, your first love and your first confession of your love. Right. And then, um, and then like, the kids, they, they have, the, the couple. Um, mm hmm with Corey and what's his name? I can't remember. Um, at the end AJ. of the movie, oh, it, like she just wounds. She just yes. kind of like collapses in his arms, and it's it, it takes you right back to at that age and at that time of mm -hmm. like wearing that ridiculous skirts that barely <laughs> cover oh anything. I had I had those skirts. Oh yeah, and then the. Yeah. Yeah, and the yeah, and then the big boots with them. Yes. <laughs> and and I, then those ridiculous huge sweaters that those guys wore. Oh, I'm like, oh my god! Oh. Yeah. And then all the like metal necklaces, like chain necklace things. Oh, yeah. Like oh, <laughs> so <just> good, <laughs> so classic. Good. Yeah, yes. and like yeah, when a cardigan was edgy, the 1995. <laughs> uh, so like yeah, well, and actually the kiss. Um, if, mm -hmm. Since we're talking about it, I too found it like at one point I was like, you know, I need I sort of paused it and I was like, I start I watched I took a bath and I watched it on my uh, on my iPad. You make soup and you took a bath while you were watching this movie. I gave what up the on hell? the soup. I know I was yeah I had there was it was kind of it's a busy week. Um, so I um, at some point um, I uh, at one point like watching the kiss like I. Like it's also the beginning of that kiss because they're they they're staring at each other and they're sort of like it's like who's gonna do this first? Like we know what's gonna happen, and it was so lovely. Like 
Yeah. And then it just, I, yeah. And just, and then there's that moment of sure, like both of them just kind of easing it. Cause you don't know, you're like, you know, it just reminds you of like, you have all these thoughts running into your head. Like, is this going to be okay? But then you can't stop like doing it. And it just is so non-transactional, I guess. Like, I don't know. I mean, not like kisses are transactional now, but it's sort of like that first kiss and, and the build up to it. And the, like, you just know that he'd been thinking about it forever. And, and then, and then her being surprised, you know, by her reaction to it. You know, like actually realizing that the guy that you've been, you know, I remember, you know, you're just so scattered. And I remember thinking, oh, this guy? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello. Like, what kind of idiot am I? Like, obviously. I, like, this. Why didn't I look at this? This obviously makes so much sense, you know? And mm -hmm. um, I felt like it just, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it's, yeah, it felt like it reminded me of those kind of, you know, those kind of kisses or that kind of moment. And then you're just kind of your delight, the delight in it afterwards, you know? I don't know. It was, yeah, that was sweet. It was a good, yeah, it was a good movie kiss. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I will admit that it was really sweet when they came together, but when she swooned, I was actually worried that she did pass out because she did have a very rough day. <laughs> that is That's true. true. She was probably not hydrating, let's face it. I think that <laughs> is probably the case yeah. and uh, really big on hydration in my house. So I do worry about that from time to time. I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I agree. Um, yeah. So and also, I'll, I guess I didn't. I watching this movie, I felt also because the um, the Joe, the manager. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wonder if this is part of it too of watching as an adult. Is you actually feel like he is looking out for them, mm -hmm. without being weird in a way, like without it not making sense. Like, oh, that seems a little like mm, I'm not, not like creepy, but just like a little like this would never happen. Like you felt so you kind of felt like you could enjoy being a teenager. Do you know what I mean? You weren't like, I have to worry about these people, you know, as an adult. Right. And and I will say that, you know, he's there. He's like, he goes off on Lucas literally verbally and like he does pop him one. So I will say. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't cool. Like, no, yeah, of course not. Yeah. But like much like the gun with the teenager. Yeah. And yeah, there's certain things where I'm just like, ooh, that's considered this now. And. Ooh, yes. that's that's called a lawsuit now and mm -hmm. ooh, that's yeah so it's all these different things happening at once so I'm, oh yeah i oh, guess and also, i used a lot of that because i was like when i worked in a bar like there were you know people would come in and pull guns or do something <laughs> dangerous so like oh, maybe not pull honey. guns like that, that only happened once but like you uh, know i like it, you know i was in a rough day so it's like i guess i that's how i dealt like I don't know. I guess it didn't strike me as much until after. Like, at the time, it wasn't like, whoa, okay. Mm -hmm. Helena, once is more than zero, so, ugh. Yeah, no, it was not. I mean, that that was not a fun part of that job. Okay, then. Uh, so I have two questions for Jen. Mm -hmm. And the first one being, what did you think back then and now mm -hmm. of Rex Manning? <laughs> Man, just... the same reaction <laughs> I had back then as I do now. Of they, it's it's incredibly. F I only thing that I can think of is funny because <laughs> it's like Rex Manning Day. They say it over and over throughout the entire movie, and this incredibly like cheesy songs like by this guy and yes I mean like you have to have some sort of a straw man that uh, that perfect girl was like pining after right I and guess. you have to be That's like a a loser. Loser. like it had you had to be like yeah it had to make sense that she would instantly forget about him and like mm -hmm. just fall for you like fall into yeah. the thing with the AJ mm -hmm. wow at the, at the same time, it provided such a funny, 
element to the entire movie. Because now I keep thinking, Rex Manning's day, you can't do this on Rex. And then like people go into go in and out of that uh, throughout yeah. the entire movie, and it's like mm-hmm. it's just so so hilarious and so <laughs> ridiculous and so yeah. <laughs> Did you? So can I ask? Because you saw this then and now. Um, so they like. So, so yes, I too. I I was envisioning like I don't know, like mm-hmm. I'm Bono, or like somebody really like sex. I guess like especially then, and not mm-hmm. like if they, he showed up. Like I was expecting sort of one of their, you know. But yeah, and then but then you got this guy who seems like maybe he was like a teen heartthrob. Oh gosh! That right, was- but like years later. Yes. Yes. I mean, it, they got it right when one of the girl went up to him to get his signature and says, oh, I don't know who you are, but my mom loves you. Right. That's like, the thing. That nailed that character. That is what that character was representing. Yeah. And so it was weird because, so, yeah, so when you meet him, he's like this, you know, pop idol, which is weird because, you know, it, they're all like, you know, obviously have a lot of judgment about music because that's what, you you know, when you work in a record store and like what's popular and all that. And they talk about it a little bit. Mm-hmm. But then there's this, um, really, there's all these really great moments where basically, like Rex Manning gets you realize that his life is kind of hell because basically everyone's like, I don't really like your music, or well, my mom liked you, or and you you were my favorite, you know, when I was a little uh-huh. girl, right? And did you like? Yeah. I thought that was like I thought it was handled so perfectly because it was such a side thing, but it was. There's a lot of like detailed moments in this movie that I thought were really good, like set pieces. And that is one of them. And like, but did you notice that when you were watching it the first time? Like, I mean, you can tell that this was like not a a list uh, uh, singer that sure. like they had their moment in the past and they're trying to keep their career going. And that was obviously very clear. It was just, just like something that, you know, a story element that they needed to have to mm-hmm. make a uh, forward progress on the main characters. Right. So like, I felt the same way about the character then as now that like, you just needed to have that element. But they played the entire movie and all the other, like, their main ensemble characters really played well against that straw man, that storytelling element, mm-hmm. which what the character was. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah, no, I totally get that. I, I will say that I get what they were going for. So, like, there was, like, a high fidelity yeah. feel to this movie of course and ryan asked is this a sequel to high fidelity or like <laughs> probably the prequel makes more sense but mm-hmm. um i was thinking about it like how old really was joe and like you know wait how old was rob supposed to be and uh-huh. the only thing about rex manning is that i wouldn't want to be around people crapping on a, a, an icon i know he's meant to be a joke in the movie but as someone who used to be like uh how can you like listening to that and now i'm just like what are you talking about this rocks yeah you know? <laughs> and who am i to say yeah. one person's enjoyment is better than that so right mm-hmm. so as it was happening i'm trying to figure out who is he supposed to be like danny bonaducci or like you know who's the equivalent now because like 95 it makes sense but like who is that equivalent now well, and I actually don't get who it. would it be in 1995 i'm trying to rem- i'm trying to think i feel like yeah there should I'm be trying- examples and i got nothing I got nothing. I know. I was thinking about that. Who would Say it be? by the bell. There was a whole like TGIF Friday night um, yes. set of movies, TV shows. Yeah. It could Wait. have been any of those. Wait, would it be? Was it the same? Would time? it be like boys to men? Like some of the characters of either boys to men or like another. I'm trying to think of like. I don't. I don't know exactly because it's like child actor turns into mm-hmm. musician. So like maybe John true. Travolta, but mm. that doesn't work too because he didn't do music later. Um, maybe like, uh, oh God, well, I'm spacing on the guy. It's like I can see him. So like, oh, the guy from the Partridge Family, the main guy or, oh, um, oh my God, Scott, like Scott Baio? 
but he didn't have a music career. <laughs> I'm just thinking of people I had a crush on, mm-hmm. like when I was a teenager, that were later like pop stars. But well, anyway, well, here, I will I will present this, and then when we will move on. Mm-hmm. I think what if I think what happens is that Rex Rex Manning needs like some sort of Tarantino resurgence, Ooh. <laughs> and then he becomes like a serious actor, and then everyone is like all you know enamored. Damn it, it's Travolta again. Never mind. I take that back. <laughs> You mean a wreck surgeons? There needs oh. to be a. Re- <laughs> Sorry, never So, if if uh, if I may uh, go to my second question for Jen, mm-hmm. I would like to know, you you saw the sweetness of the individuals, but mm-hmm. what was your thoughts on AJ and Corey and their saga that played out in this movie? Oh, it's, you know, it, it it was just so, so sweet because he was so nervous. He's like, I'm going to tell her today's the day. Today's the day. I'm going to tell her at noon. No, I'm going to tell her at 137. <laughs> you know, he was keep <laughs> pushing him back it. and he was picking like random time. It's like, and he was announcing it to everybody. Right. And then. You know, they also, I mean, this is, this is a, a kid, not a kid, probably like in their like early twenties, but. Well, yeah, he did, like he did. He said that he had rent, like his yep. rent just went up. So he clearly, yep. I, I'm going to assume early twenties. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he's like, I don't have to explain my art to you because when he glued all the quarters on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Love <laughs> um, that kind of stuff. And then too. he's constantly drawing and then, you know, um, like and telling everybody how he's gonna let her know that you know he's she's the love of his life and so he's got that that like slight tortured artist thing going but like little too happy and wants to take care of everybody too because when deborah came in right and the head was shaved he's like no 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 i want you to know that you're okay like you're mm-hmm. not gonna you know until you tell me what's going on, I'm not going to let you pass. Yep. So it's like goody tissue, tortured artist thing going. And it was just so incredibly sweet. Um, for better or worse, it's more of a like one dimensional character um, versus, I guess, the three women characters who completely lost it. <laughs> yeah. More or less. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they are like they do have these kind of you're right. Like the women in this seem more complicated, maybe a little three dimensional. Cause even like mm-hmm. um, oh my god, Lucas, the one who lost mm-hmm. the money, right? That's the one who lost the money. Yep. And yes. you know, even him, like he's yeah, like you don't find it. You're like, okay, well, obviously the guy has like, you know, mm-hmm. it is a victim of magical thinking. But, like, beyond that, you don't really learn that much about him. But he's sort of interesting. And I'm like, do I think he's interesting because he's wearing a turtleneck? Like, what's happening? And and then I have to say. (laughs) Can be both. Why not both? Yeah. Um, Like, I remember watching this for the first, like, watching it when I was younger. I find Lucas' character to be so cool and, like... You know, like if there was any guy that I wanted to fall for, it was him. Aww. And I, mm-hmm. I have to say, I still feel the same way watching it today. It's like that was the cool kid that was okay. I think he looked damn good in that black turtleneck with those jeans. Damn I'm good. I'm not gonna um, disagree with you. Though. I know. I'm with like, you. I'm, I'm then right there with you. <laughs> And then, you know, he's got this, like, troubled past, but he's gotten much better. It's like he's got his dark sides. Like, um, and then, you know, there was this uh, guy, Joe, who basically rescued him. And he was about to, like, do everything to make sure that, you know, to make him happy. Because from the very beginning to the end, he was this mysterious character. It's like he, he had the touch, the magical touch of, like, knowing exactly needed to happen so you know he kind of let this story play out like he he felt like he lost the money on purpose so Mm. that the sequence of events would happen so that person he who take who took care of him now can do the things that he really wants to do so he he got to basically pay that back like 
got to help the person right. who helped him. Because at mm-hmm. the end, it's like, oh, everything works out. Mm, not just yet. And then yeah. we go, switch into that, you know, the, the love story closing. And then it's like, okay, now everything is in its proper place at the end of the movie. <laughs> so, like, he knew. He just kind of set everything in motion. Right. And like, you don't know. Like, but it's yeah. so comforting that you have somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I would have totally had a crush on him, too. And AJ would have been my buddy. Like, the whole thing would have happened. <laughs> I also so, want to give I also want to give the movie credit because they do talk into the to the screen and they they break the fourth wall kind of but not really mm-hmm. but in in a different movie it would have been annoying but here it it add to the magical feeling. Yes. God, you're right cuz I barely even noticed that. Mm-hmm. Now that you say it I'm like, "Oh." Yeah. Yeah. I mean the goofy guy literally goes in, like goes up to the camera and says, "It's Rex Manning's day." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. But I guess like I usually notice that a lot, but yeah. I just felt like it fit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I felt like it fit, and I think like yeah, I don't, you know, I guess like okay, I get that this isn't the deepest movie, but like if you take it apart, you're like you kind of did all the movie things really well. Like <laughs> nothing feels weird the the world is really rich mm. and even things that you would normally be like uh like oh this is you know this takes you out of it just because of the time it doesn't you're yeah. like afterwards you're like no okay. great so i don't know i'm just saying <laughs> those people like, like it needed to have a higher score i'm not saying it's like an academy award winner i'm not saying it's like belongs you know in the criterion collection yeah. but it's like a solid movie it's an oh, escape yeah. It is like escape. What I will, I will call, I will put the movie like this into the cult classic category of like there, there are people who love this movie and nobody, and then everybody else has no idea that this movie exists or not. Basically, what Diana was saying in the very beginning of this podcast, I think she like, really, really captured yeah, it. Yeah, nailed it. It's like it's a cult classic. People love it. Love it. Most people are like. What records? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Yeah, and I don't. Yeah, I, it's, it's like I don't know if I'm like you must see this movie, but like mm-hmm. I have to say, it's a huge pleasure. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but actually, and actually, building off of um, what Diana said, G, like, uh, so actually, wait, uh, let, let me change the subject. Um, I ask a different question. Did you see this movie since like you saw it as a teenager? Or uh, yeah, or, and and then since have you watched this movie since like b- between today and uh, mm-hmm. you know, a couple of days ago? Because there are times where I kind of want to, like, I'm in the mood for this movie and mm-hmm. this particular movie. And what I are those times? A, I don't know. It's like I will get a craving, like. It really is. It's like I am craving for like a very specific ice cream or cookie. Mm. And then it's kind of hard to explain, nail down why you crave that, but you do. God, I okay. have very specific craving for this movie from time to time. I'm like, and then that's why I would occasionally um, like search for it. And I'm always sad that it's not streaming on Netflix or Amazon or anything like that. I'm like, uh, and then, you know, it's like, I should really just buy this movie. Um, but yeah, like, it, it's a craving. I can see that. Like, I can see that feeling. It's like, it's at once comforting and yet, um, like, not fluffy. Like, there's enough there. Mm-hmm. Would, I, it doesn't feel quite right. But if I throw out the word whimsy. It just feels a little bit off. Do, do you feel like this movie provides a whimsy when you're in a mood? Or like a very, like, it brings up very specific set of emotions. Yeah. Yep. And like, and then help me like get it out in one mm-hmm. sense. Like, yeah. yeah. Like the catharsis yeah. kind of feeling like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. I, yeah, I can watch somebody. Because ha- I that's why I watch movies as well like I just kind of you know sometimes I go to movies just because I'm like I can't seem to cry wow or something like that you know like yeah uh 
I think I'll like, it's like, I'm like, I will like, I will go and I'll get this uh-huh. out. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. It's like listening to a sad song. Yes. Oh, I have two movies that I know that will guarantee a cry. For okay. Me. Oh, it's like, ugh. it's, it's very touching. I say actually it was like two movies that I kind of wanted to do with uh, you all, um, oh. which is one is they both involve, um, um, Rachel. Oh, McAdams. Yeah, is she from Arrival? Oh no, that's Amy Adams. A A Amy Adams. She's in both of these movies. Um, I love Amy Adams. One is I know she's so fantastic. Um, okay. She is in this one movie, the Disney movie, where she's a princess and then she gets thrown into a real world. And I'm totally forgetting the movie. Enchanted. Mm. So- so yeah. now when you would talk about whimsy, that movie yeah. is about whimsy. That is, there is this dance scene where ah. yeah. Yeah. Go on, it go just, on. I, I I have no words for the emotion that it brings every time I see that scene of those two dance at the, kind of near the end of the movie. I just love it so much. And then there's another movie where she's also in. I think it's Miss Pettigrew saves a day or oh, has a yeah. day. Yeah. And there was a moment where she sings a song kind of close to the end of the movie. Lives for a day. It has Frances McDormand. Yeah. Oh, that's got uh, like me all over it. It's um, she sings this song in such a touching manner that. Yeah, it just brings up so much emotion. So with this, with this particular movie, it's just mm-hmm. those like sweet first love and then people um, dealing with their demons and being able to push through it because, you know, like um, that gal gets to sing in a band at the end of the movie um oh, that yeah. was so oh my god i can't believe we haven't talked about that i know it, it's like she's so bold she's mm-hmm. so bold in everything else she's so confident and yes. yet this one thing that is her dream she doesn't do and then she gets to do it and it's yeah. it's not even like she's actually such a great singer in it which i think is interesting it's mm-hmm. that like the energy, you know, she just clearly is yes. just meant to be up there. And the fact that she has such fear and anxiety, and then when she does it, like, after she sings, she has this moment where she's like, oh, oh my God, I'm doing this. this is, like, you know, because she sings, and then and then the, the song goes on, right? Like, she's yeah. only singing the bridge or the chorus. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, oh, like, oh, my God, I just, I'm doing it. Like, it's happening. And it's so much fun to see. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. Yeah, it wasn't that great. But at the same time, just watching her <laughs> up there and enjoying it and feeling the rush. I'm like, yep. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, because she can fix that. Like she's, you know, she can, <laughs> she can fix the bad singing. Yes. I mean, she can learn, you know, I mean, yeah. about to say what she can she can fix it in post. What are we talking about? <laughs> I mean, like, she can work, you know, I mean, by the time she's in Chicago, she's totally learned how to sing. So it's fun. Oh about to yeah. say never mind the fact that you know she's in chicago uh, the last movie which which we just did uh yes. down with love she's singing in that movie yeah she'll be fine she'll be fine <laughs> i'm not worried about that part you know but oh my god well um i think it's t- is it time it might be time to ask the questions like uh mm-hmm. i'm gonna just do it um so when do you think so i guess we're assuming we're talking about aj yeah. Um, and Corey. So when do you think they fell in love? I mean, he was in love from the very, very beginning. It's the, I think for Corey, it's very clear after she had her breakdown moment mm-hmm. where like she got to accept who she is and starting to be okay with it and not everything has to be perfect and you can just feel the pressure of 
like some image that she's trying to live up to and everybody's forcing her to live up to and then just kind of letting all that crumble and then seeing this person for who he is and being okay with it and accepting it. Um, so like to me, it really was the moment when she starts punching him to tell him. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's like... It's such a like a you know kindergarten elementary school move that that was just so you know you you still see that today but out of you know very small children mm-hmm. but like <laughs> saying like I love you so much as you know you're punching them <laughs> right like you give no nothing else to do with that you're kind of mad yeah. like yeah. Mm-hmm. You're kind of mad at yourself. You're kind of mad. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, you know, after the kiss, I think that's when suddenly the love deepens because if, yes, she's physically letting things go by just mm-hmm. slumping in his arms, but it just feels like a release. Like mm. her body's releasing with all the emotions are that are being released at the same time and all this like accepting and self-growth that she's going through <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> um, very quickly. It, like love deepens very, very quickly at that moment. At least that's how I would interpret that. So um, I know what you're going to ask next. The but future. Wait. Wait, wait, no, we have to, we'll do this and then we'll ask the future, but it will be there. Diana. I love that she already had an answer prepared. I know. Because she's just like, wait, wait, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> hey, no need to be the Corey overachiever right now. Exactly. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Somebody's kissing butt. Are you, uh, <laughs> Polina, were you prompting me? Yes. Well, um, as Jen pointed out, it was abundantly clear that AJ had been enamored with Corey for a long time, that he's actually trying to psych himself up and do the adult thing of setting a hard, firm deadline of when he's going to tell her that he's in love with her. And um, it's great to actually see, you know, he is the artist and hearing him struggle because I really down when I was watching it, I had to pause it and back it up because um, it goes with this whole artist, you're so deep, but like as an adult, it's like, okay, that's interesting, but it's not as deep as you think it is. But um, mm. he asked Lucas, do you think it's possible to love someone else and not know it? Um, and I think he was referring to Corey. It's just like, she's talking about Rex Manning and he's in love with her, but you know, is it possible that she's, you know, cause he's trying to think like, maybe she hasn't said anything. Cause she just doesn't know it yet. And so Ooh. he's tapping into that like dark artist deepness to just mm-hmm. try to justify the fact that she hasn't, you know, maybe looked at him the same way, but clearly he's enamored with her. He admits it. We will run with it. Um, I mean, until the Empire Records prequel comes out, we'll never know for sure. <laughs> um, but, but, Jen, I think you you nailed it completely. Where she's she's told, and it's like the worst timing ever because of her, mm-hmm. you know, disastrous situation with <laughs> yes. Rex Manning, and then she has her freak out as you know a friend, and then as you know a student and then you know as a, a person at the store and then just in general and then watching the blow up happen and, and AJ comes in and you know tries to you know I don't think he personally had a problem with Rex Manning you know having sex with Gina I think yeah. if any I mean they were they were slightly amused by it but it wasn't mm-hmm. for the fact that she was so upset as well I mean he gets in there and he starts you know punching things and that's yeah. that's that's a something mm-hmm. um, I, violence is wrong but you know <laughs> It, it's 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 something primal in knowing that you know someone is acting on your behalf is you know if we reduce the violence part of it it's there's mm-hmm. still something there but when you talked about you know she goes to him and it's not i love you too it's just like punch 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 and and i think it's great that you saw it as playful i saw it as she's still grappling with this so hard because it's like you changed the rules how dare you oh and i'm so mad that you changed the rules and i'm so freaking smart but i didn't see it (laughs) and she does she does collapse and i was confused and Mm -hmm. mildly worried for but (laughs) the fact that she just popped right back up again and did it again it's just like 
this is new. This is different. And mm-hmm. he's going to be here to do this. I'm going to try it. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think she needs like Ooh. a little bit more time, but it's like, it's, it's growing as we speak. And it's so great because at that age, it's just so easy to be like, Oh God, no, no. <laughs> or, Oh, Hey, Oh, all right, let's do this. So mm-hmm. she's, She's she's moving with caution, but she's moving in a way that's going to make AJ very happy. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I think so. Like, again, this movie is only 24 hours, so. Right. <laughs> God, it's easy to forget. It was yeah, at 137. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. But no, it's just, it yeah. is. It's very sweet. They're young. They're foolish. Mm-hmm. They've got big plans ahead. But at the same time, it's like, it's so cute. With you, 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 you. I know. With your cuteness. At first, I was like, oh, I had this moment afterwards where I was like, well, he obviously lives on his own because you talked about rent. Yep. Now, maybe there's something there, you know, uh, but I'm just going to assume that he's like, you know, out of high school. Mm-hmm. And she's in high school. because She talks about a school. And I was like, I was like, well, and then I realized I was like, wait, when I was her age, I totally dated a guy who was like 21. So. You know, I was perfectly happy. So I don't know. He could also be 19 because yeah. 95, right. it was very easy to move the hell out of your parents' house and just start, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. So I think like, anyway, just acknowledging that for a moment, I was like, oh, but then I'm like, well, that's, it's fine. Like it's, they're clearly in the same headspace. You know what I mean? It's not, Yeah. they're in the same sort of, yeah, they're like in the same world. Mm-hmm. Um. And I think you're right. He's probably closer to that because, you know, obviously he's hanging out. But, um, yeah, I don't know. So for me, I definitely, you know, I, I agree with all of you that, like, watching her have that moment of, like, <gasps> I really uh, – that she was like, oh, my God, this guy was just a friend. She's been – I've been so focused on everything else that mm-hmm. it's, like – it's almost like the clouds part. And she's like, oh, um, <laughs> this has been here this whole, like, of course. Right. And just like that, uh, I think that mind shift, it's so funny. Like, I feel like I was just thinking back to how quickly when you're that age, like mm-hmm. how everything really does change. And a friend of mine was saying about being grounded when you're 17, like we thought, you know, now it's like, like that was like the biggest deal. But then we're like, oh, actually everything does change at a party. You know, like things are so changeable that like you're like, um, and then, um, and you don't really know how to make things happen. And so it's just like figuring out how to know your, you know, your own mind is, is well, I guess still difficult, but like mm-hmm. definitely yeah. is more difficult then. And And just, like, the fact that she's, you know, and this whole idea of, like, I'm going to figure out exactly when to lose my virginity, you know, it's, like, (laughs) and that's, like, what you focus on. It's, like, madness, right? Um, Like, you know, it's, like, I remember being so upset, but, you know, like, you think back to that time and you're, like, I remember being so upset, but not what I was upset about, you know? Like, you find journal entries and, you know, they're, like, they're things where you're, like, Wait, I didn't even, you know, maybe because I didn't write every day. So I didn't have mostly they were just like this, you know, vomit of whatever I was going through. And so I don't think I ever contextualized them for Mm -hmm. even myself. Right. So I'd be like, what was this about? (laughs) Like pages and pages of like, I was like, who the who was this that I was talking about? But anyway. (laughs) Um, so I really identified with her at that moment. Like that's rang very true to me, um, which is, you know, and all like hats off to Liv Tyler, but, um, as an actress, but like for him, I was thinking, when do you, I think he fell in love with her. And I actually think that it was at first sight, which is why he can't say it, you know, it, because that's why it's like, he, it's, it's, That's why it's come to this, because, you know, if he he sort of realized that he was, you know, in love with her at a different time, maybe he would have, like, pushed something, you know, like, and they're obviously spending a lot of time together. But I think it, like, then, because it was first sight, and, you know, maybe she had a boyfriend when she started, so it was like, you know, it's just become this thing in his head, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, you know, obviously coming into this, but... uh, he's in love like he was in love but 
we don't see it happening, but yeah. um, but we do see him, um, you know, just like suddenly you see him relax because he's like, oh, my God, this isn't all in my head, you know, <laughs> so much thinking, so much in your head mm-hmm. and not like actual action action. So yeah. anyway, yeah. that's what I think. Yes. Not not that not that I I agree with both of you. I'm just remembering how he did one clever move which was to get her to react because he started dancing with Deborah in the middle of the movie. Yes. To, yes. Yeah, huh. to elicit some um, reaction from Corey. I was like, nice move. That was a mm-hmm. very good move. Yes. Like because you see forcing. her actually looking. Yes. And like, mm-hmm. so maybe she started getting inklings of that. Yes. Like, why am I getting jealous? This is new emotion. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, when but it's like, so she's easy. definitely getting angry. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, you, it's so easy to take for granted. It's just like, he's yeah. always going to be there. Wait, what is he doing? What? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're right, because that is the first time where she's like, oh, wait, he's not going to be here forever. Yep. So it opens the door. Smart man. Not saying that's like the most mature thing to do. Man. No. You, know, whatever. <laughs> you, can't, you can't argue with the results. Um, of course, oh, I never a movie. Oh, so. I never said it was mature. I just, uh, <laughs> yeah, I said it was effective. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is not an advice podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we we sprinkle advice here and there, but usually it's like, you know, Book Street or uh, movies to watch. So, um, Happily Ever Aftermath is not a doctor and should not take any of the advice they give as any type of legal <laughs> or medical advice. advice yeah. Please consult with your doctor and or and or legal professional before taking any advice offered by Happily Ever Aftermath. Um, so. All right. Well, I guess it's time to ask uh, Jen what uh, what happens to these crazy kids next. I have my answer, but it has there's a caveat to this. All right, Woo! which is you know how we kept talking about hinting at the fact that this movie feels very sweet and somewhat innocent and things like that in the universe that the movie creates. I think these two go to Boston and she becomes successful doing probably, I don't know, business thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, but she becomes very successful. He becomes, you know, a semi-successful artist, but his career never takes off like hers. Mm -hmm. Uh, At the same time, you know, he loves her so it doesn't really matter that you know he might feel like he's in the shadow of her success but like you know they make that relationship work it only works in this universe that the movie has created because like you know it's their love is just so sweet and you can tell that it's gonna grow over time and I think this is something maybe all three of us could relate to is because, you know, I would say that, you know, we met our partners like relatively young and we stayed with them. We grow, we grew with them. So we know that it could totally work. <laughs> right. So, so like to me, it's like, what I, I met my husband, like, geez, like when I was barely 20. And I met my husband the year this came out. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, I mean, we didn't start dating right away, but yeah. But exactly. Like you become friends and then you start dating and then you just have this person in your life. And that's what I imagine for them. And I think it's possible, totally possible in this universe. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Like he's very devoted to um, her, and that she takes care of him. Hmm. <laughs> interesting. How about you, Diana? Well, it's it's so interesting that you you mention you know talking about being young and having the cynicism of that thing, but you and I and Polina are are familiar with young relationships that mm-hmm. you know 
happen, but also have gone the distance up until this point in time. You know, we never know what the future holds, but. <laughs> But at the same time, yeah, but at I the mean, same statistically time. speaking, like we're all on our first marriages that I know of. Yes. Uh, I don't think of uh, but you know, statistically speaking, that you know, it could be on our second. It could happen had, at any time. I had this weird made up thing that, like, if you made it through 10 years, you're gonna stay forever. And I did too, but it's not. No, it's not. In I, fact, I had yeah. friends who divorced after 18 and they didn't have kids. Um, so I remember like my reaction. They were close friends. And I remember my reaction being like, is that like a thing that can happen? You know, like, I mean, and I think I was probably, God, I don't know how long had been together at that point. A little over 10 years. And I, I. I literally like, and it was a weird reaction because, you know, now looking back, it all makes sense now that I know more. But I remember when they announced it and they did it in a very like conscious uncouple, you know, but without that language, but just in a like, <laughs> look, amicable, you know, we're still yeah. like friends. You still, you know, and now I know more and the whole thing makes a lot more sense. But I think at the mm -hmm. time, and I remember doing what I usually, what I often do when I, when something doesn't make sense is I did a bunch of research and basically, actually it's really common that 18 is like the cutoff 18, a lot of divorces happen around 18 years and which surprised me. I think I thought it would be maybe twenties. Cause it'd be like the kid, you know, kids. Oh, I would assume uh, 18. It makes sense. Cause that's when they go away at college and then you realize, Oh, now that we don't have this child binder in the household anymore, right. I'm out. But what's interesting about that is I'm like, well, that would assume that you would have a child your first year of marriage. And mm -hmm. which is, you know, not ter I don't know if it's a common or not, but like at least anecdotally isn't terribly common for me and my friends. But like but also that, you know, it's like you decided at, at that moment. Mm -hmm. to divorce but usually your actual divorce is you know probably a couple years after you kind of decide hmm. right I don't think anyone goes okay you know what I woke up this morning and I'm out <laughs> uh, I mean you for... do I mean I do sometimes but like you know then I'm like 10 minutes later I'm like oh you make coffee <laughs> um, <laughs> That's pretty specific, Polina. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a morning person. <laughs> it's usually when I'm very hungry and, or, you know, Shad's looking for the thing that he loses every day. That's when I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> and then like, 10 minutes later, he finds it and he's all cute again, or he makes coffee and everything's <laughs> fine. I don't know. It's like, then it's I like you make coffee, I'll keep you. Yeah. For one more day. <laughs> I'm a very simple person, you know? I'm not complicated. <laughs> wow. I, I would beg to differ with what you just explained, but okay. <laughs> See, that's going to make me very simple. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So, so let's... let's I am joking. Here. I do not think about divorcing my husband daily. I really don't. I, I love... I very happily married, but... Awesome. Okay. So, so back to AJ and Corey. So, so mm -hmm. pulling off of what Jen said, I originally thought... You know, the youngness, not feeling it. I consider, you know, the couples that I know to be like a, potentially an outlier. But but going through this conversation. So my original intention was is that they were going to go to Boston together. She was going to do Harvard. He was going to do generic Boston art school. He didn't specify. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, art school. Great. Um, and so I was thinking like. Well, she does have a speed problem, so that's not good. <laughs> I know, um, the speed problem, like, I couldn't, I can't quite, I felt, like, I haven't quite reconciled that with anything else. Like, it's almost like I'm like, it's a weird detail, and I'm just going to forget about it. I feel like I realize that's actually how I'm handling it. I think we were, like, 45 minutes into the movie the first time. Did I miss a, a her popping a pill in, in other parts of the movie? Yes. So, she has this necklace. Yeah. Uh, that it's uh, like one of those, you know, poison, like which I think I either really, I really wanted at that, at that time, okay. but I never could find. <laughs> uh, but it's like one of those, you know, necklaces, like, you know, you imagine Mata Hari having and like, you know, with like poison in it or anything. But so, but I, um, uh, 
Yeah, and so you see her take something, take one pill out and pop it, but you mm-hmm. don't know when. And yeah. I think you see that one more time. Okay, because mm-hmm. I think I remember seeing it when it was like after or right near the pizza parlor scene where mm-hmm. she gets mad at Gina. That's the first time I noticed it. I was just wondering if it happened before mm-hmm. then. But mm-hmm. not not as important. Well, actually, we can ask our listeners when we uh, drop our our uh, Twitter yeah, please. Twitter handle later. But okay, so so getting back to that. So originally it was going to be there's a lot going on here where she has a problem. He is devoted, but at the same time, you know, a lot can happen. Mm-hmm. And so I thought that maybe this could have a very easily shaken foundation of their relationship. Mm-hmm. But going back and somehow falling into the magic of this movie while somehow simultaneously forgetting about, you know, the gun and the the suicide (laughs) attempt and all this other stuff. It it, it just has this powerful impact. And I I blame slash credit the music and the performances. (laughs) So ultimately what I'm going to say is that this particular couple, she's going to go off to Harvard He's going to go off to Boston Art School. He's going to thrive in school and he's going to, you know, plow through it and find some really good comfort there. But what's going to happen to her is that Harvard is going to be, I mean, if the pressure is on her now, mm-hmm. I think Harvard is going to take a very difficult toll, especially after she promised that she wasn't going to use the pills anymore for him. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that's its own danger where you say, I won't do this for you. And, yeah. then, you know, it's, it's yeah, kind of it comes a secret because yeah. you, you don't tell the person. So it's it's going to it's going to cause some serious issues where Harvard's going to be too much. She's going to, you know, flop back and forth between. But I promised him, but mm-hmm. I need it because if I'm going to be the success that my father thinks I should be she's going to kind of have some serious problems with Mm -hmm. the pressure of everything. So I think what's going to happen is, is that she is going to drop out of Harvard and just have Mm. some serious problems with it moving forward. But he's going to keep going what it is. And they're going to find strength with each other as she tries to kind of reassemble herself. Mm. He's, he's going to finish school. He's going to start working while she just kind of slowly tries to reestablish herself, get her bearings, find what it is that she wants to study and move it forward, you know, and then simultaneously they're going to grow together. Eventually she's going to make it through. And by that point, he's going to reach this thing where I swear I was going to be an artist. I swear I was going to do this thing. So he starts to have this sort of like career transition crisis where it's like, wait, this doesn't make any sense anymore. Should I, should I, Shouldn't I be having the midlife crisis? But I'm too young for that, you know? And then it's just another point for them to just kind of come together in a life of transition. They're going to get married. They're going to be together while he's still kind of figuring himself out. She's finally at a point where it's not about the perfection. She does have her own talents. And she's Mm -hmm. going to find a career that's going to, like, really work with that. Because before it was just like, I need to work up to my potential. Mm -hmm. But instead, that doesn't mean she had an outlet for it. So I'm seeing this huge struggle moving its way through to a happy marriage. Oh, oh, that's nice. That is nice. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, mine is going to be sort of boring and a little depressing. So I kind (laughs) of wish I'd like let you go last. But uh, (laughs) mine is actually, I think that, um, uh, so I think that they're going to be, they're going to be, like annoyingly happy. I think that this is who she's going to uh, lose her virginity to. And oh, I, right. The virginity. Okay. Right. Right. Because, you know, I think that like, she's, this is, this is like, I think they genuinely will be in love. They'll be the first love. I think though, I completely agree that going off to sc- in the world of the movie, it, I want them to like, you know, in the world, the movie, I want them less. But I actually think, you know, I agree that it's going to be college because I think that basically, you know, they're, it's going to be so stressful and they're, it's, uh, it's such a time when, you know, you're like, basically the, you know, the, 
the world of your college, uh, especially when you're dealing with art school and Harvard, is so strong, especially, you know, then. And I think, I think ultimately, you know, they're going to have less and less to talk about. I think there's going to be like other people that where they, um, you know, they have a, they have a relation, you know, they're, they're going to find other people that maybe, you know, as, as basically he gets to spend his entire life with artists, you know, and she's going to spend her entire, like with people who are interested in whatever, you know, it's really hard to know what, you know, as she tries to figure out how to balance, like what other people expect of her with what she actually wants, you know, AJ is much further on that spectrum than she is. Like he knows that, he knows what he wants to be an artist. He just needs to figure out sort of how do you do that as a life, you know? And I assume just like looking at that, he's going to become, you know, an illustrator hmm. and be okay. Um, <laughs> and, you know, like not great. He's never going to make a million dollars, but he's going to, you know, like he's going to be okay. Um, it's, you know, it's always going to be like when's, you know, What's my next contract's coming from? But like, and then I think what he's, and so I think that they, w like, they're going to try, but I think at some point they're, he, I think you're right. He's going to see her basically quote unquote change, you know? Mm. And, and it really won't be like he's changed, but he doesn't realize it. And I think they'll just start to fight. Like, I think the pressure the pressure of the two different worlds, even if they're in the same city, will like, and I, you know, will start to collapse. And I think it'll probably be, you know, maybe sophomore year. Like I think the, you know, in freshman year, it's still like, we're committed to this. You're the love of my life. And I think it'll be really difficult, but I think, I think they'll like have really fond memories of each other. You know, like, I don't think it's going to be, I think it'll be a really difficult breakup when it happens, but I think that, I think they'll recover and still have this thing. And I have a feeling that probably, uh, you know, these people are, because I think that the people who work this place will, like, basically go from, they'll go through every single platform to stay in touch, like, you know, <laughs> Like I imagine right now they probably like I like you know they'll they'll have like they definitely have a group text they probably have a you know WhatsApp like there's you know they're going to like they're going to have they're going to you know they're going to have an email chain they're going to you know what I mean like I think they're going to you know it'll become less and less but I think they'll like you know a few of them will stay in each other's lives you know um yeah but I still think they're you know I think that they'll become, they'll stay friends. They'll know each other. Um, and I think they'll always kind of be like, wow, this, you know, this was a really sweet and special thing that we had. Right. And it might take mm -hmm. them a while, a little while to get there, but I think I, I don't see them. Ha I mean, I, I see them as having like a breakup that feels like, cr like so intense in the moment. And then a month later is like painful and raw, but not traumatic, you know? I mean, not like they're over it in a month, but not when it not. I, I don't think it's going to be like, I don't think it's going to be like, yeah, I don't think it's going to be, I guess, like, a, you know, a lot of real like drama. It's more like once they made the decision and then, you know, that, yeah, they're just, it's going to happen. Mm. Who do you think initiates it? I think he does. Okay. I think she wants to, but can't because she doesn't know herself yet. That kind of plays. But I into do think she does something like either start taking speed again, which obviously like, yeah, I, they don't really have a good plan for that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think your, your scenario plays with, with the movie as well. Cause again, he's the one who took the action and she's the mm -hmm. one who hesitated. So. Oh it, yeah. Tra it tracks. I mean, I'm not fond of it, but, you know, it tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, I think, you know, I think she'll, uh, you know, maybe have another, like, a you know, kind of have a, like, 
how to slip in a relationship on the side. Um, oh, you made it work. You know, that kind of thing. And, you know, not tell, like, so I think that basically he'll start it, but, you know, she'll kind of agree because she's there. I mean, why don't you just give them a cat and run it over, Polina? <laughs> oh, jeez. I mean, they're gonna, I just want to say that it's not a failure. Like, they are going to have a really happy relationship. No, I'm, I'm messing know, with you. It's for, just like, that- a good time, and I want, you know... It'll just, that's, that's, that's what I want for them. No, I, I understand. I was, I was there in the beginning too, but again, I was, I was caught up in the magic of the movie. I decided I know. you kids mm-hmm. are going to stay together because the movie feels <laughs> good. <laughs> I know. I really feel like, um, I really feel like it's, yeah, I just really feel like it's, like, I just, I don't feel like because a relationship is short, it's a failure. Mm-hmm. No. No, and, no. Yeah. No, that's, uh, I, and that's... I think that's not short. I think it'll be a few years, you know? Oof. That's so funny that a few years are just like, at, at, you know, being in my late oh, 30s, like, no. that's just nothing now. It's just nothing. like, <laughs> yeah. No, it goes so fast. It goes so fast. It's ridiculous. Like, yeah, I feel like time at once is like has a weird, a like elastic, strange, rapid rolling downhill quality that like <laughs> is just shocking. Like, you yeah. know, like you, you're someone's like, I'm like, that was, I'm like, that was like, I'm like, oh, that was like two years ago. It's like, oh no, that was like ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Time yeah. is odd right now. I simultaneously yes. think that it's March and July at the same time. Yeah, no, I think you're right. It's like, yeah, it's either, yeah, like, I can't remember what January felt like. And yet, yeah. I'm yeah. convinced it still hasn't happened yet. Yeah, it's very strange. Doesn't I, matter. I agree. And yet it happens so quickly. It's like, it's like, wait, we've it's been three months of this? Anyway, okay. So... <laughs> It's not, um, it's another, another, it's our special, uh, COVID episode. Um, so yeah, uh, that was, that was, thank you, Jen. Um, mm-hmm. uh, this was a great pick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so glad you. you came back. Yeah. Oh, yes. thank you. Oh, feels good. You are, you are welcome back anytime. Polina's the one yeah. who invited you, but I am confirming it out loud. For all of our listeners to hear. Uh, I had a wonderful time. I'm so glad. I'm so glad because then you'll come back. Um, (laughs) It's super fun to talk about this stuff with you. Um, And uh, even though we had a disclaimer earlier that any advice we provide is not actual (laughs) advice. um, I mean, it's advice, but it's probably not like, you know. I mean. Doesn't have a, there's no, there's not just. We're not, we're not neither medical doctors or law professionals. Well, I, I want to throw out there that if you happen to be using the fashion of this movie and <sighs> the boots and the skirt happens to be your particular outfit at the time and you decided not to wear socks in those boots, I would recommend that you check out our sponsor, Frankie and Murr, and you take a look at their Fight the Foot Funk spray. Because you might look fantastic in that short scoot, skirt, boots, and you know fuzzy, you know sweater combo, but your feet are not going to be great at the end of the day. Yeah, <laughs> and you want the freedom to be able to do whatever you want. You don't want to be like, you know what? I want to run through an open field and a freak out, and you can't do it in your boots. So, because I want you want to feel the grass on your feet. Yeah, you want to be ready. You want to be ready for this. Boots are a serious problem. Well, I mean, I think it's just important for you to be taking care of your feet smells, especially if you're with your one true love, AJ, and he happens to tell you, you know, something, you decide to have a freak out, run away from him, um, and you take your boots off. He won't love you anymore if your feet are disgusting. Oh, yeah, obviously. (laughs) That's why. I mean, that's Sean's thing of, you know, when I don't use this fight which i think is what you're getting at i i yeah that's when he's like mm, i don't know if i can do this anymore 
not the best. So the that best. was just my very odd way of saying thank you to our sponsor, Frankie and Murr. <laughs> and uh, you can check out their stuff. If you happen to make a purchase, go to their website, frankieandmurr.com. And if you make a purchase, you can use the code happily one H A P P I L Y and the number one. Yeah, use that code and you'll get 20% off your purchase and orders over $40 get free shipping. Ooh. Mm. Now back I to know. my Yeah, back to my disclaimer. We'd offer you advice, but Fight the Foot Funk is just one option to you. Please take a look at all of their essential oils and products. I find them wonderful. Mhm. Uh Hello Sunshine, I feel like uh, yeah, that's my current favorite. Again, I feel like I go back to it. <laughs> Last week it was uh, Spray the Bitch Away. Why is that, Polina? Was, I don't know. <laughs> uh, no reason at all. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the oh. bitch in this family. Oh, wait, yeah. I guess I am. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, so I alluded to it before, but if you happen to have any type of reaction to what we were talking about, um, if you have commentary on like AJ's floppy hair or any of the fashion <laughs> or any of the music, yeah. please hit me up. Yeah. yeah I'll talk about floppy hair until the cows come home. Yeah. Um, so enjoy the floppy hair. Yeah. But specifically we're on Twitter and Instagram at Heemcast. H E A M C A S T. Yeah. We're at Facebook at happily ever aftermath. Um, you know, what's really funny is that, you know, we have this kind of thing where, you know, if you like what you're hearing, tell us, a f tell a friend and then, you know, it'll help spread the word, spread the love. But, you know, Polina just tells her friends to come on to the show. So I yeah, could that's an option, too. <laughs> <laughs> it works out so well for us. Who am I to argue about that? No, no, it works very well. Uh, I'm very lucky. I have excellent friends. <laughs> Oh, I don't right. know why. All right. So, Polina, next mm -hmm. time. So, I think we were talking because uh, we did you and Mac May Gregor. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I think we made a pack that I get to choose the next, uh, like, all of Ju the June movies. Well, I don't know if packed is the right word because, like, you know, we saw that first it was me and then it was Meg and then it was you and then it was me and then it was you. So now we're back to you. Yeah. But I actually, uh, I got to be in my bonnet, um, about, well, one, I wanted to have Jen on. So that was good. And she and I had, we're talking. And, uh, so I got my wish there. Um, and then, um, I also was, uh, then I was like, you know, Diana mentions a movie, like, a lot. A lot. And I feel like we... So our third anniversary kind of uh, passed without... Like, I think for, like, a lot of either anniversaries or birthdays, like, this mm -hmm. during this time sort of passed without, you know, a lot of fanfare, except, you know, a tweet, which and it, everyone responded so lovingly to really mm -hmm. appreciate. But then also, like, Diana and I exchanged a text. Um, <laughs> which was wonderful and I was delighted, but like, you know, um, but I started thinking like, uh, of, you know, I'm like, we've been doing this three years and we've been doing like teenage comedy, some, a lot of teenage comedies, some of which I never really had been exposed to. And I was like, maybe this is kind of meta, but isn't this the perfect time to watch? And I know I'm going to get this wrong. Another teen movie. I'm sorry, do you want me to rescue you right Please now? Please rescue me right now. <laughs> anyway, I got really excited and I wanted to do this movie, uh, which Diana like talks about but never wanted to do. And now um, I get my wish because, you know, it's the week of my birthday and I get whatever I want. Well, <laughs> it should work that way. Well, allow me. So Polina is talking about not another teen movie. Thank um, you. This movie came out in 2001. It is unprecedented. I want this on the record that it is unprecedented that Polina is making a pick of a movie that she has never seen before, knowing yes. full well that I have a history with this movie Ooh. that she has decided that she wants to explore in our next yes. episode. Exactly. <laughs> so for our... 
Yes. So for our anniversary celebration delay, what have you, (laughs) this is being granted. But don't 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 you fret, dear listeners, because we all know that if she's going to be doing this, I will have some. Yeah, there'll be revenge. Revenge. (laughs) I will have plans later on. Revenge. Revenge is a dish best served cold. Yeah. yeah, Diana's uh, MO, I think. Yeah. Well, you know, it will be slow. It will be painful. You will never know when it'll come, except I'll, I'll give you a heads up. (laughs) (laughs) all right so uh yeah so all right so next time not another teen movie uh excited about that which year is that actually 2001 2001 all right um yeah thank you so much jen of course Uh, invite me anytime oh we will yeah (laughs) um it'll happen it will happen. Yeah, I really appreciate it. It's so much fun to talk to you about this. And also, thank you for being a fan of the show and giving such good, uh, you know, such good feedback. And um, and just, it's really fun to talk to you about this stuff. So, yeah. Uh, thanks thanks for bringing your picks, your insight, and, and all the fun. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay, guys. Have all a right. good week. Uh, have a good two weeks. Enjoy, relax. S- stay sane and safe. Take care. Care of yourself. (laughs) Bye. Bye.